John Ernst Steinbeck, Jr., February 27, 1902, December 20, 1968, was an American writer and the 1962 Nobel Prize in Literature winner for his realistic and imaginative writings, combining as they do sympathetic humor and keen social perception. He has been called a giant of American letters. During his writing career, he authored 33 books, with one book co-authored alongside Edward Ricketts, including 16 novels, six non-fiction books, and two collections of short stories, he is widely known for the comic novels Tortilla Flat, 1935, and Cannery Row, 1945, the multi-generation epic East of Eden, 1952, and the novellas The Red Pony, 1933, and Of Mice and Men, 1937. The Pulitzer Prize, winning The Grapes of Wrath, 1939, is considered Steinbeck's masterpiece and part of the American literary canon. In the first 75 years after it was published, it sold 14 million copies. Most of Steinbeck's work is set in Central California, particularly in the Salinas Valley and the California Coast Ranges region. His works frequently explored the themes of fate and injustice, especially as applied to downtrodden or everyman protagonists. Steinbeck was born on February 27, 1902, in Salinas, California. He was of German, English, and Irish descent. Johann Adolf Steinbeck, 1828, 1913, Steinbeck's paternal grandfather was a founder of Mount Hope, a short-lived messianic farming colony, a short-lived messianic farming colony in Palestine that disbanded after Arab attackers killed his brother and raped his brother's wife and mother and mother-in-law. He arrived in the United States in 1858, shortening the family name to Steinbeck. The family farm in Heiligen House, Mechmen, Germany, is still named Gross Spinbeck. His father, John Ernst Steinbeck, 1862, 1935, served as Monterey County Treasurer. John's mother, Olive Hamilton, 1867, 1934, a former school teacher, shared Steinbeck's passion for reading and writing. The Steinbecks were members of the Episcopal Church. Although Steinbeck later became agnostic, Steinbeck lived in a small rural valley, no more than a frontier settlement set in some of the world's most fertile soil, about 25 miles from the Pacific coast. Both valley and coast would serve as settings for some of his best fiction. He spent his summers working on nearby ranches, including a post ranch in Big Sur. He later labored with migrant workers on Spreckle's sugar beet farms. There he learned of the harsher aspects of the migrant life and the darker side of human nature, which supplied him with material expressed in of material expressed in of mice and men. He explored his surroundings, walking across local forests, fields, and farms. While working at Spreckle's sugar company, he sometimes worked in their laboratory, which gave him time to write. He had considerable mechanical aptitude and fondness for repairing things he owned. Steinbeck graduated from Salinas High School in 1919 and went on to study English literature at Stanford University in Palo Alto. Leaving without a degree in 1925, he traveled to New York City where he took odd jobs while trying to write. When he failed to publish his work, he returned to California and worked in 1928 as a tour guide and caretaker at Lake Tahoe, where he met Carol Henning, his first wife. They married in January 1930 in Los Angeles, where, with friends, he attempted to make money by manufacturing plaster mannequins. When their money ran out six months later due to a slow market, Steinbeck and Carol moved back to Pacific Grove, California, to a cottage owned by his father on the Monterey Peninsula, a few blocks outside the Monterey city limits. The elder Steinbecks gave John free housing paper for his manuscripts, and from 1928, loans that allowed him to write without looking for work. During the Great Depression, Steinbeck bought a small boat and later claimed that he was able to live on the fish and crabs that he gathered from the sea and fresh vegetables from his garden and local farm. When those sources failed, Steinbeck and his wife accepted welfare and on rare occasions stole bacon from the local produce market. Whatever food they had, they shared with their friends. 
Carol became the model for Mary Talbot in Steinbeck's novel Cannery Row. In 1930, Steinbeck met the marine biologist Ed Ricketts, who became a close friend and mentor to Steinbeck during the following decade, teaching him a great deal about philosophy and biology. Ricketts, usually very quiet yet likable, with an inner self-sufficiency and an encyclopedic knowledge of diverse subjects, became a focus of Steinbeck's attention. Ricketts had taken a college class from Warder Quad Ali, a biologist and ecological theorist, who would go on to write a classic early textbook on ecology. Ricketts became a proponent of ecological thinking in which man was only one part of a great chain of being, caught in a web of life too large for him to control or understand. Meanwhile, Ricketts operated a biological lab on the coast of Monterey, selling biological samples of small animals, fish, rays, starfish, turtles, and other marine forms to schools and colleges. Between 1930 and 1936, Steinbeck and Ricketts became close friends. Steinbeck's wife began working at the lab as secretary, bookkeeper. Steinbeck helped on an informal basis. They formed a common bond based on their love of music and art, and John learned biology and Ricketts' ecological philosophy. When Steinbeck became emotionally upset, Ricketts sometimes played music for him. Steinbeck's first novel, Cup of Gold, published in 1929, is loosely based on the life and death of privateer Henry Morgan. It centers on Morgan's assault and sacking of Panama Viejo, sometimes referred to as the Cup of Gold and on the women, brighter than the sun, who were said to be found there. In 1930, Steinbeck wrote a werewolf murder mystery, Murder at Full Moon, that has never been published because Steinbeck considered it unworthy of publication. Between 1930 and 1930 and 1933, Steinbeck produced three shorter works. The Pastures of Heaven, published in 1932, consists of 12 interconnected stories about a valley near Monterey, which was discovered by a Spanish corporal while chasing runaway Indian slaves. In 1933, Steinbeck published The Red Pony, a 100-page four-chapter story weaving in memories of Steinbeck's childhood. To a god unknown, named after a Vedic hymn, follows the life of a homesteader and his family in California depicting a character with a primal and pagan worship of the land he works. Although he had not achieved the status of a well-known writer, he never doubted that he would achieve greatness. Steinbeck achieved his first critical success with Tortilla Flat, 1935, a novel set in post-war Monterey, California, that won the California Commonwealth Club's gold medal. It portrays the adventures of a group of classless and usually homeless young men in Monterey after World War I, just before U.S. Prohibition. They are portrayed in ironic comparison to mythic knights on a quest and reject nearly all the standard mores of American society in enjoyment of a dissolute life devoted to wine, lust, camaraderie, and petty theft. In presenting the 1962 Nobel Prize to Steinbeck, the Swedish Academy cited spicy and comic tales about a gang of paisanos, a social individuals who, in their wild revels, are almost caricatures of King Arthur's Knights of the Round Table. It has been said that in the United States, this book came as a welcome antidote to the gloom of the then prevailing depression. Fortilla Flat was adapted as a 1942 film of the same name, starring Spencer Tracy, Hedy Lamar and John Garfield, a friend of Steinbeck, with some of the proceeds, he built a summer ranch, home in Los Gatos. Steinbeck began to write a series of California novels and Dust Bowl fiction, set among common people during the Great Depression. These included in dubious battle of mice and men and the grapes of wrath. He also wrote an article series called The Harvest Gypsies for the San Francisco News about the plight of the migrant worker. Of Mice and Men was a drama about the dreams of two migrant agricultural laborers in California. It was critically acclaimed in Steinbeck's 1962 Nobel Prize citation called it a little masterpiece. Its stage production was a hit. 
starring Wallace Ford as George and Broderick Crawford as George's companion, the mentally childlike but physically powerful itinerant farmhand Remy, Steinbeck refused to travel from his home in California to attend any performance of the play during its New York run, telling director George S. Kaufman that the play as it existed in his own mind was perfect and that anything presented on stage would only be a disappointment. Steinbeck wrote two more stage plays, The Moon is Down and Burning Bright, Of Mice and Men was also adapted as a 1939 Hollywood film with Lone Chaney Jr. as Lenny. He had filled the role in the Los Angeles stage production. Meredith and Steinbeck became close friends for the next two decades. Another film based on the novella was made in 1992, starring Gary Sinise as George and John Malkovich as Lenny. Steinbeck followed this wave of success with The Grapes of Wrath, 1939, based on newspaper articles about migrant agricultural workers that he had written in San Francisco. It is commonly considered his greatest work. According to the New York Times, it was the best-selling book of 1939 and 430,000 copies had been printed by February 1940. In that month, it won the National Book Award. Favorite Fiction Book of 1939, voted by members of the American Booksellers Association. Later that year, it won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction and was adapted as a film directed by John Ford, starring Henry Fonda as Tom Joad. Fonda was nominated for the Best Actor Academy Award. Steinbeck's New Deal political views, negative portrayal of aspects of capitalism, and sympathy for the plight of workers led to a backlash against the author, especially close to home. Claiming the book both was obscene and misrepresented conditions in the county, the current county board of supervisors banned the book from the county's publicly funded schools and libraries in August 1939. This ban lasted until January 1941 of the controversy Steinbeck wrote. The vilification of me out here from the large landowners and bankers is pretty bad. The latest is a rumor started by them that the Okies hate me and have threatened to kill me for lying about them. I'm frightened at the rolling night of this damn thing. It is completely out of hand. I mean, a kind of hysteria about the book is growing that is not healthy. The film versions of The Grapes of Wrath and of Mice and Men by two different movie studios were in production simultaneously, allowing Steinbeck to spend full day on the set of The Grapes of Wrath and the next day on the set of Mice and Men. In the 1930s and 1940s, Ed Ricketts strongly influenced Steinbeck's writing. Steinbeck frequently took small trips with Ricketts along the California coast to give himself time off from his writing and to collect biological specimens, which Ricketts sold for a living. Their co-authored book, Sea of Cortez, December 1941, about a collecting expedition to the Gulf of California in 1940, which was part travelogue and part natural history, published just as the U.S. entered World War II, never found an audience and did not sell well. However, in 1951, Steinbeck republished the narrative portion of the book as the log from the Sea of Cortez under his name only. Though Ricketts had written some of it, this work remains in print today. Although Carol accompanied Steinbeck on the trip, their marriage was beginning to suffer and ended a year later in 1941, even as Steinbeck worked on the manuscript for the book. In 1942, after his divorce from Carol, he married Gwendolyn Gwynne Conger. Ricketts was Steinbeck's model for the character of Doc in Cannery Row, 1945, and Sweet Thursday, 1954, branded in Burning Bright and characters in Indubious Battle. 1936, and The Grapes of Wrath, 1936. Ecological themes recur in Steinbeck's novels of the period. Steinbeck's close relations with Ricketts ended in 1941, when, when Steinbeck moved away from Pacific Grove and divorced his wife, Carol. Ricketts biographer Eric Enotam opined that, except for East of Eden, 1952, Steinbeck's writing declined after Ricketts' untimely death in 1948 Steinbeck's novel, The Moon is Down, 1942, about the Socrates, inspired spirit of resistance in an occupied village in Northern Europe, 
was made into a film almost immediately. It was presumed that the unnamed country of the novel was Norway and the occupants, the Germans. In 1945, Steinbeck received the King Hayakon Seven Freedom Cross for his literary contributions to the Norwegian resistance movement. In 1943, Steinbeck served as a World War II war correspondent for the New York Herald Tribune and worked with the Office of Strategic Services predecessor of the CIA. It was at that time he became friends with Will Lang, Jr. of Time Life magazine. During the war, Steinbeck accompanied the commando raids of Douglas Fairbanks, Jr.'s Beach Jumpers program, which launched small unit diversion operations against German-held islands in the Mediterranean. At one point, he accompanied Fairbanks on an invasion of an island off the coast of Italy and used a Thompson submachine gun to help capture Italian and German prisoners. Some of his writings from this period were incorporated in the documentary Once There Was a War, 1950. Steinbeck returned from the war with a number of wounds from shrapnel and some psychological trauma. He treated himself as ever by writing, he wrote Alfred Hitchcock's movie, Lifeboat, 1944, and with screenwriter Jack Wagner, a medal for Benny, 1945, about Paisenos from Tortilla Flat going to war. He later requested that his name be removed from the credits of Lifeboat because he believed the final version of the film had racist undertones. In 1944, suffering from homesickness for his Pacific Grove, Monterey Life of the 1930s, he wrote Cannery Row, 1945, which became so famous that in 1958 Ocean View Avenue in Monterey, the setting of the book was renamed Cannery Row. After the war, he wrote The Pearl, 1947, knowing it would be filmed eventually. The story first appeared in the December 1945 issue of Woman's Home Companion magazine as The Pearl of the World. It was illustrated by John Allen Maxwell. The novel is an imaginative telling of a story which Steinbeck had heard in La Paz in 1940 as related in the log from the Sea of Cortez, which he described in Chapter 11 as being so much like a parable that it almost can't be. Steinbeck traveled to Cuernavaca, Mexico for the filming with Wagner, who helped with the script. On this trip, he would be inspired by the story of Emiliano Zapata and subsequently wrote a film script, Viva Zapata, Way, directed by Elia Kazan and starring Marlon Brando and Anthony Quinn. In 1947, Steinbeck made his first trip to the Soviet Union with photographer Robert Kappa. He visited Moscow, Kyiv, Tbilisi, Batumi, and Stalingrad, some of the first Americans to visit many parts of the U.S. Earth since the Communist Revolution. Steinbeck's 1948 book about their experiences a Russian journal, was illustrated with Kappa's photo. In 1948, the year the book was published, Steinbeck was elected to the American Academy of Arts and Letters. In 1952, Steinbeck's longest novel, East of Eden, was published. According to his third wife, Elaine, he considered it his magnum opus, his greatest novel. In 1952, John Steinbeck appeared as the on-screen narrator of 20th Century Fox's film, O. Henry's Full House. Although Steinbeck later admitted he was uncomfortable before the camera, he provided interesting introductions to several filmed adaptations of short stories by the legendary writer O. Henry. About the same time, Steinbeck recorded readings of several of his short stories for Columbia Records. The recordings provide a record of Steinbeck's deep, resonant voice following the success of Viva Zapata. Steinbeck collaborated with Kazan on the 1955 film East of Eden, James Dean's movie debut. From March to October 1959, Steinbeck and his third wife, Elaine, rented a cottage in the hamlet of Discovey Redlands near Bruton in Somerset, England, while Steinbeck researched his retelling of the Arthurian legend of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Glastonbury Tor was visible from the cottage, and Steinbeck also visited the nearby hill fort of Cadbury Castle, the supposed site of King Arthur's court of Camelot. The unfinished manuscript was published after his death in 1976. 
as the acts of King Arthur and his noble knight. The Steinbecks recounted the time spent in Somerset as the happiest of their life together. Travels with Charlie. In Search of America is a travelogue of his 1960 road trip with his poodle Charlie. Steinbeck bemoans his lost youth and roots while dispensing both criticism and praise for the United States. According to Steinbeck's son Tom, Steinbeck made the journey because he knew he was dying and wanted to see the country one last time. Steinbeck's last novel, The Winter of Our Discontent, 1961, examines moral decline in the United States. The protagonist, Ethan, grows discontented with his own moral decline and that of those around him. The book has a very different tone from Steinbeck's amoral and ecological stance in earlier works such as Tortilla Flat and Cannery Row. It was not of critical success. Many reviewers recognized the importance of the novel, but were disappointed that it was not another Grapes of Wrath. In the Nobel Prize presentation speech the next year, however, the Swedish Academy cited it most favorably. Here he attained the same standard which he set in the Grapes of Wrath. Again, he holds his position as an independent expounder of the truth with an unbiased instinct for what is genuinely American, be it good or bad, apparently taken aback by the critical reception of this novel and the critical outcry when he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1962. Steinbeck published no more fiction in the remaining six years before his death. In 1962, Steinbeck won the Nobel Prize for Literature for his realistic and imaginative writing, combining as it does sympathetic humor and keen social perception. The selection was heavily criticized and described as one of the Academy's biggest mistakes in one Swedish newspaper. The reaction of American literary critics was also harsh. The New York Times asked why the Nobel Committee gave the award to an author whose limited talent is, in his best books, watered down by tenth-rate philosophizing, noting that a, the international character of the award and the weight attached to it raised questions about the mechanics of selection and how close the Nobel Committee is to the main currents of American writing. You really think it interesting that the laurel was not awarded to a writer. His significance, influence, and sheer body of work had already made a more profound impression on the literature of our age. Steinbeck, when asked on the day of the announcement if he deserved the Nobel, replied, frankly, no. Biographer Jackson Benson notes Cezanne was one of the few in the world that one could not buy nor gain by political maneuver. It was precisely because the committee made its judgment on its own criteria, rather than plugging into the main currents of American writing as defined by the critical establishment that the award had value. In his acceptance speech later in the year in Stockholm, he said, the writer is delegated to declare and to celebrate man's proven capacity for greatness of heart and spirit, for gallantry and defeat, for courage, compassion and love. In the endless war against weakness and despair, these are the bright rally flags of hope and of emulation. I hold that a writer who does not believe in the perfectibility of man has no dedication nor any membership in literature. Fifty years later, in 2012, the Nobel Prize opened its archives, and it was revealed that Steinbeck was a compromised choice among a shortlist consisting of Steinbeck, British authors Robert Graves and Lawrence Durrell, French dramatist John Well, and Danish author Karen Blixen, the declassified documents show that he was chosen as the best of a bad lot. There aren't any obvious candidates for the Nobel Prize, and the prize committee is in an unenviable situation, wrote committee member Henry Olson. Although the committee believed Steinbeck's best work was behind him by 1962, committee member Anders Osterling believed the release of his novel, The Winter of Our Discontent, showed that after some signs of slowing down in recent years, Schur gained his position as a social truth teller, an authentic realist fully equal to his predecessors Sinclair Lewis and Ernest Hemingway. Although modest about his own talent as a writer, Steinbeck talked openly of his own admiration of certain writers. In 1953, he wrote that he considered cartoonist Al Cap, creator of the satirical Lil Abner, possibly the best writer in the world today. At his own first Nobel Prize press conference, he was asked his favorite authors and works and replied, 
Hemingway short stories, and nearly everything Faulkner wrote. In September 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson awarded Steinbeck the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In 1967, at the behest of Newsday magazine, Steinbeck went to Vietnam to report on the war. He thought of the Vietnam War as a heroic venture and was considered a hawk for his position on the war. His son served in Vietnam before his death, and Steinbeck visited one son in the battlefield. At one point, he was allowed to man a machine, gun watch position at night at a fire base while his son and other members of his platoon slept. Steinbeck and his first wife, Carol Henning, married in January 1930 in Los Angeles. By 1940, their marriage was beginning to suffer and ended a year later in 1941. In 1942, so after his divorce from Carol, Steinbeck married Gwendolyn Wincombe. With his second wife, Steinbeck had two sons, Thomas, Tom, Miles Steinbeck, 1944-2016, and John Steinbeck, 4, 1946-1991. In May 1946, 1991, in May 1948, Steinbeck returned to California on an emergency trip to be with his friend at Ricketts, who had been seriously injured when a trip. Ricketts died hours before Steinbeck arrived. Upon returning home, Steinbeck was confronted by Gwyn, who asked for a divorce, which became final in October. Steinbeck spent the year after Ricketts' death in deep depression. In June 1949, Steinbeck met stage manager Elaine Scott at a restaurant in Carmel, California. Steinbeck and Scott eventually began a relationship, and in December 1950, they married. Within a week of the finalizing of Scott's own divorce from actor Zachary Scott, this third marriage for Steinbeck lasted until his death in 1968. Steinbeck was also an acquaintance with the modernist poet Robinson Jeffers, a Californian neighbor. In a letter to Elizabeth Otis, Steinbeck wrote, Robinson Jeffers and his wife came in to call the other day. She looks a little older, but that is all, and she's just the same. In 1962, Steinbeck began acting as friend and mentor to the young writer and naturalist Jack Rudlow, who was trying to established his own biological supply company, now Gulf Specimen Marine Laboratory in Florida. Their correspondence continued until Steinbeck's death. In 1966, Steinbeck traveled to Tel Aviv to visit the site of Mount Hope, a farm community established in Israel by his grandfather, whose brother Friedrich Gross Steinbeck was murdered by Arab Merid martyrs in 1858 in what became known as the Outrages at Jaffa. John Steinbeck died in New York City on December 20, 1968, during the 1968 flu pandemic of heart disease and congestive heart failure. He was 66 and had been a lifelong smoker. An autopsy showed nearly complete occlusion of the main coronary arteries. In accordance with his wishes, his body was cremated and interred on March 4, 1969, at the Hamilton family gravesite in Salinas, with those of his parents and maternal grandparents. His third wife, Elaine, was buried in the plot in 2004. He had written to his doctor that he felt deeply in his flesh, that he would not survive his physical death, and that the biological end of his life was the final end to it. Steinbeck's incomplete novel based on the King Arthur legends of Mallory and others the Acts of King Arthur and His Noble Knights, was published in 1976. Many of Steinbeck's works are required reading in American high school. In the United Kingdom, of Mice and Men is one of the key texts used by the examining body, okay, for its English literature text. A study by the Center for the Learning and Teaching of Literature in the United States found that of Mice and Men, was one of the ten most frequently read books in public high schools, contrarywise. Steinbeck's works have been frequently banned in the United States. The Grapes of Wrath was banned by school boards. In August 1939, the Kern County Board of Supervisors banned the book from the county's publicly funded schools and libraries. It was burned in Salinas on two different occasions. In 2003, a school board in Mississippi banned it on the grounds of profanity. According to the American Library Association, Steinbeck was one of the ten most frequently banned authors from 1990 to 2004 
with of mice and men ranking sixth out of 100 such books in the United States. Steinbeck grew up in California's Salinas Valley, a culturally diverse place with a rich migratory and immigrant history. This upbringing imparted a regionalistic flavor to his writing, giving many of his works a distinct sense of place. Salinas, Monterey, and parts of the San Joaquin Valley were the setting for many of his stories. The area is now sometimes referred to as Steinbeck country. Most of his early work dealt with subjects familiar to him from his formative years. An exception was his first novel, Cup of Gold, which concerns the pirate privateer, Henry Morgan, whose adventures had captured Steinbeck's imagination as a child. In his subsequent novels, Steinbeck found a more authentic voice by drawing upon direct memories of his life in California. His childhood friend, Max Wagner, a brother of Jack Wagner and who later became a film actor, served as inspiration for the Red Pony. Later, he used actual American conditions and events in the first half of the 20th century, which he had experienced first hand as a reporter. Steinbeck often populated his stories with struggling characters. His works examined the lives of the working class and migrant workers during the Dust Bowl and the Great Depression. His later work reflected his wide range of interests, including marine biology, politics, religion, history, and mythology. One of his last published works was Travels with Charlie, a travel log of a road trip he took in 1960 to rediscover America. Steinbeck's boyhood home a turreted Victorian building in downtown Salinas, has been preserved and restored by the Valley Guild, a nonprofit organization. Fixed menu lunches are served Monday through Saturday, and the house is open for tours on Sunday afternoons during the summer. The National Steinbeck Center, two blocks away at 1 Main Street, is the only museum in the U.S. dedicated to a single author. Dana G.O.I., chair of the National Endowment for the Arts, told an audience at the center, this is really the best modern literary shrine in the country, and I've seen them all. It's Steinbeckiana. Includes Rocinante, a camper truck in which Steinbeck made the cross-country trip, described in Travels with Charlie. His father's cottage on 11th Street in Pacific Grove, where Steinbeck wrote some of his earliest books, also survives. In Monterey, Ed Ricketts' laboratory survives, though it is not yet open to the public. And at the corner, which Steinbeck describes in Cannery Row, also the store which once belonged to Lee Chung and the adjacent vacant lot frequented by the hobos of Cannery Row, the site of the Hogden Sardine Cannery, next to Doc's laboratory, is now occupied by the Monterey Bay Aquarium. In 1958, the street that Steinbeck described as Cannery Row in the novel, once named Ocean View Avenue, was renamed Cannery Row in honor of the novel. The town of Monterey has commemorated Steinbeck's work with an avenue of flags depicting characters from Cannery Row, historical plaques and sculpted busts depicting Steinbeck and Ricketson. February 27, 1979, the 77th anniversary of the writer's birth, the United States Postal Service issued a stamp featuring Steinbeck starting the Postal Service's literary arts series honoring American writers. Steinbeck was inducted into the Demolay International Hall of Fame in 1995. On December 5, 2007, California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger and First Lady Maria Shriver inducted Steinbeck into the California Hall of Fame, located at the California Museum for History, Women, and the Arts. His son, author Thomas Steinbeck accepted the award on his behalf. To commemorate the 112th anniversary of Steinbeck's birthday on February 27, 2014, Google displayed an interactive doodle utilizing animation, which included illustrations portraying scenes and quotes from several novels by the author Steinbeck and his friend in Ricketts appear as fictionalized characters in the 2016 novel Monterey Bay about the founding of the Monterey Bay Aquarium by Lindsay Hatton, Penguin Press. In February 2016, Caltrans installed signage to identify a five mile segment of U.S. segment of U.S. Route 101 in Salinas as the John Steinbeck Highway in accordance with a 2014 state legislative resolution. In 2019, the Sag Harbor Town Board approved the creation of the John Steinbeck Waterfront Park, 
across from the iconic town windmill. The structures on the parcel were demolished and park benches installed near the beach. The BB windmill replica already had a plaque memorializing the author who wrote from a small hut overlooking the cove during his sojourn in the literary haven. Steinbeck was affiliated to the St. Paul's Episcopal Church and he stayed attached throughout his life to Episcopalianism. Especially in his works of fiction, Steinbeck was highly conscious of religion and incorporated it into his style and theme. The shaping of his characters often drew on the Bible and the theology of Anglicanism combining elements of Roman Catholicism and Protestantism. Steinbeck distanced himself from religious views when he left Salinas for Stanford. However, the work he produced still reflected the language of his childhood at Salinas, and his beliefs remained a powerful influence within his fiction and nonfiction work. William Ray considered his Episcopal views are prominently displayed in The Grapes of Wrath, in which themes of conversion and self-sacrifice play a major part in the characters Casey and Tom, who achieve spiritual transcendence through conversion. Steinbeck's contacts with leftist authors, journalists, and labor union figures may have influenced his writing. He joined the League of American Writers, a communist organization, in 1935. Steinbeck was mentored by radical writers Lincoln Steffens and his wife Ella Winter. Through Francis Whitaker, a member of the Communist Party Uses John Reed Club for Writers, Steinbeck met with strike organizers from the Cannery and Agricultural Workers Industrial Union. In 1939, he signed a letter with some other writers in support of the Soviet invasion of Finland and the Soviet-established puppet government. Documents released by the Central Intelligence Agency in 2012 indicate that Steinbeck offered his services to the agency in 1952 while planning a European tour, and the director of Central Intelligence, Walter Bedell Smith, was eager to take him up on the offer. What work, if any, Steinbeck may have performed for the CA during the Cold War is unknown. In June 1957, Steinbeck took a personal and professional risk by supporting him when Miller refused to name names in the House on American Activities Committee trials. Steinbeck called the period one of the strangest and most frightening times a government and people have ever faced. In 1963, Steinbeck visited the Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic at the behest of John Kennedy. During his visit, he sat for a rare portrait by painter Martiro Saryan and visited Gighard Monastery. Footage of this visit filmed by Rafael Aramian was sold in 2013 by his granddaughter. In 1967, when he was sent to Vietnam to report on the war, his sympathetic portrayal of the United States Army led the New York Post to denounce him for betraying his leftist pile. Steinbeck's biographer, Jay Perini, says Steinbeck's friendship with President Lyndon B. Johnson influenced his views on Vietnam. Steinbeck may also have been concerned about the safety of his son serving in Vietnam. Steinbeck complained publicly about government harassment. Thomas Steinbeck, the author's eldest son, said that J. Edgar Hoover, director of the FBI at the time, could find no basis for prosecuting Steinbeck and therefore used his power to encourage the U.S. Internal Revenue Service to audit Steinbeck's taxes every single year of his life just to annoy him. According to Thomas, a true artist is one who, without a thought for self, stands up against the stones of condemnation and speaks for those who are given no real voice in the halls of justice or the halls of justice or the halls of government. By doing so, these people will naturally become the enemies of the Political status quo, in a 1942 letter to United States Attorney General Francis Biddle, John Steinbeck wrote, Do you suppose you could ask Edgar's boys to stop stepping on my heels? They think I am an enemy alien. In 1936, Steinbeck published the first of what came to be known as his Dust Bowl trilogy, which included Of Mice and Men and the Grapes of Rot. This first novel tells the story of a fruit picker's strike in California, which is both aided and damaged by the help of the party. 
generally taken to be the Communist Party. Although this is never spelled out in the book, Of Mice and Men is a tragedy that was written as a play in 1937. The story is about two traveling ranch workers, George and Lenny, trying to earn enough money to buy their own farmerant. As it is set in 1930s America, it provides an insight into the Great Depression, encompassing themes of racism, loneliness, prejudice against the mentally ill, and the struggle for personal independence. Along with the Grapes of Wrath, East of Eden, and the Pearl of Mice and Men is one of Steinbeck's best-known work. It was made into a movie three times in 1939, starring Burgess Meredith, Lon Chaney Jr., and Betty Field. In 1982, starring Randy Quaid, Robert Blake, and Ted Neely. And in 1992, starring Gary Sines and John Malkovich. The Grapes of Wrath is set in the Great Depression and describes a family of sharecroppers, the Joids, who were driven from their land due to the dust storms of the Dust Bowl. The title is a reference to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Some critics found it too sympathetic to the workers' plight and too critical of capitalism, but it found a large audience of its own. It won both the National Book Award and Pulitzer Prize for fiction novels and was adapted as a film starring Henry Fonda and Jane Darwell and Jane Darwell and directed by John Ford. Steinbeck deals with the nature of good and evil in this Salinas Valley saga. The story follows two families, the Hamiltons based on Steinbeck's own maternal ancestry and the Trasks reprising stories about the biblical Adam and his progeny. The book was published in 1952 Portions of the novel were made into a 1955 movie directed by Elia Kazan and starring James Dean. In 1960, Steinbeck bought a pickup truck and had it modified with a custom-built camper top, which was rare at the time, and drove across the United States with his faithful group. Tell it, poodle, Charlie. Steinbeck nicknamed his truck Rocinante after Don Quixote's noble steed. In this sometimes comical, sometimes melancholic book. Steinbeck describes what he sees from Maine to Montana to California and from there to Texas and Louisiana and back to his home on Long Island. The restored camper truck is on exhibit in the National Steinbeck Center in Salinas.